With doubtnet, get instant video solutions to all your maths, physics, chemistry, and biology doubts. Just click the image of the question, crop the question, and get instant video solution. Download doubtnet app today. In this question, a ball is dropped from a height of 19.6 meter above the ground. It rebounds from the ground and raises itself up to the same height. We have to take the starting point as the origin and vertically downward as the positive x-axis. Then we have to draw approximate values of displacement time graph, velocity time graph and acceleration time graph. Also we have to neglect the small interval during which the ball was in contact with the ground. Now let's just take here, this is our ball and it is dropped from a point A which is 19.6 meter above the ground. Now in order to make the graph let's just create some prerequisites here. Now during the whole journey when the ball reaches point A again it covers a path A to B and then from B to A. During this journey, the acceleration is acting downwards of 9.8 meter per second squared. Now this ball is going to have an acceleration of 9.8 meter per second squared downward due to earth's pull. Now our convention here is the downward direction is positive x-axis. Now we can use equations of uniformly accelerated motion which are x is equal to ut plus half at square. Now taking the path from a to b here, the initial velocity of ball is 0 the displacement that the ball covered is 19.6 meter this is equal to half into the acceleration is 9.8 meter per second square and we have to calculate the time that it took to reach b so the time comes out to be two seconds now as we can see the velocity of the ball at point b Let's just take it as v. Let's just calculate this velocity using our first equation of uniformly accelerated motion which is v is equal to u plus at. The initial velocity is 0. So the final velocity comes out to be 9.8 into 2 which is 19.6 meter per second. The instant the ball reaches the point b it has a velocity of 19.6 meter per second. Now taking a close look from path A to B and from B to A, these are exact same displacement. That means the velocity here after rebouncing from the ground should be exactly equal to 19.6 meter per second. Only the direction is changed the magnitude remains constant all right and this journey would also take two seconds going from b to a now first thing we know here that the total journey is of four seconds also now let's just take the look at the displacement here at time t is equal to zero the displacement is 0. At time t is equal to 2 second, the displacement is 19.6 meter and at t is equal to 4 second, the displacement is again 0. Now we know that here in the path a to b, the velocity increases because the acceleration is downwards and in the path from b to a the velocity decreases because acceleration is acting 
opposite to the direction of velocity. So let's just create our displacement time graph here. We know that the displacement is ut plus half gt squared. A closer look to this equation says that this equation is parabolic. Now this is our, on x-axis, this is our time t. This is our displacement x. At time t is equal to 0, the position is at 0. At time t is equal to 2 seconds, the position is 19.6 meter. And at t is equal to 4 second, the position is again 0. Now since this equation is parabolic, the graph could be this one or this one. We know that in going from A to B, the velocity increases. And we also know that the slope of position time graph provides us the instantaneous velocity. So we should take the graph in which velocity or I would say the slope is increasing. Now here in going we can see that the slope is increasing. So we should take this graph and here the velocity at different instants is decreasing. So we should reject this graph. So this is our final graph from t is equal to 0 to t is equal to 2 seconds. Now this same equation which is parabolic will be in going from b to a. Now similarly there are two paths here which are parabolic. Which one should we take? Using the same concept. Here, the velocity must decrease. In this path, here, the velocity is increasing. So, we should take this path. So, this is our final graph here. Of the displacement time graph. Now let's just make our velocity time graph. We have three instants at t is equal to 0, at t is equal to 2 second and at t is equal to 4 second. We know, we know that the velocity is increasing continuously with a constant acceleration of 9.8 meter per second square. So this velocity will continue to rise. What is the final velocity? When it reaches a point B, this is 19.6 meter per second. At the same instant, during the small time interval, very small time interval, delta t, this velocity changes to minus 19.6 meter per second. This is minus 19.6 meter per second. And then the velocity goes on decreasing until it becomes zero. This is our velocity time graph. Now let's just make our acceleration time graph here. We know that during the whole journey the acceleration is constant. So we have our three instants here zero. 2 second and 4 second here when the ball is at B for a very very small time duration delta T the acceleration A here is equal to the final velocity which is minus 19.6 minus initial velocity which is 19.6 divided by this very small time interval 
दिस कम्स आउट टू बी इक्वल टू माइनस थर्टी नाइन पॉइंट टू डिवाइडेड बाय डेल्टा टी नो दिस टाइम इंटरवल इज वेरी वेरी स्मॉल दैट मींस एक्सेलरेशन हियर इज मच ग्रेटर देन नाइन पॉइंट एट सो एट टी इज इक्वल टू टू सेकेंड हियर वी हैव टू निगलेक्ट दिस पर्टिकुलर टाइम इंटरवल एंड देर इज अ डिसकंटिन्यूटी हियर एंड ड्यूरिंग दिस होल जर्नी द एक्सेलरेशन इज कॉन्स्टेंट विच इज इक्वल टू नाइन पॉइंट एट मीटर पर सेकेंड स्क्वेर नॉट दिस एक्सेलरेशन इज कॉन्स्टेंट इवन फर्दर नॉट दिस इज द सेम एक्सेलरेशन फ्रॉम टी इज इक्वल टू टू सेकेंड टू टी इज इक्वल टू फोर सेकेंड दीज आर ऑल graphs for class 6 to 12 itj and neat level trusted by more than 5 crore students download doubt and app today